All right, here we are in Photoshop, and you can see I'm trying out some of the grasses I've found. Let me go backwards so I can show you what I did a little bit here. I opened up a grass image, which looked like that. I kind of sized it a little bit, put it to the size I want that will fit my scene a little better. And you can see I, I got a, a kind of a big sort of a high resolution and just a big field of grass that I can use. So remember our multimat channel, go to that and you can see this is solid red. If you go into channels here and of course you need to have your windows layers tab open and your channels well my channels are right here with my layers. So if I go to channels, I'm not sure if this is how yours will be set up or not, but you need to look for your channels tab. And then if you go to the red channel, if I turn off the RGB channels and just look at the red, you can see that that solid red that I had here is making it so that just the red layer or the red channel has pure white pixels wherever that bright red is. Now what that means is I can hit control or hold down control and click on that red channel and it will make a perfect selection of wherever those white pixels are. Make sure you turn your RGB back on. Go into here. You can turn off this layer now. Our selection will stay. And then what I did, I'll delete this and do it again. Delete. What I did is create a mask while this selection is on. And there you go. So you can see how handy that multi-mat was. If you tried to cut this out yourself, it would be ridiculous. So if I alt-click on my mask now, you can see it matches that red channel perfectly. And here's our, our grass image only showing through where that red multi-mat material was. Now, by default it will be locked. So if I move the grass, it will move the, uh, the alpha channel or the mat as well. I want to unlock that so that I can move oops, so that I can move the grass around, place it however I want, place it kind of down here, and then um, the mask will stay in the right place. So that's kind of perfect right there. Now you can see the color and the lighting of the grass doesn't really match. In fact, I'm not sure this image will work because we need something with sunlight coming from the left. I'm not sure we have that here. Mm, there's really no sunlight here, which sometimes can be good. So, what should we do? Let's let me show you how to do some adjustment layers. So, if we take new adjustment layer, let's start with the hue and saturation. Hit okay hit this button here to make sure we're only affecting the layer immediately below this adjustment layer we just created. You can see now it's got an arrow pointing to the grass layer. So we're only going to be affecting that layer. Double click on it and see I can turn down the saturation. That kind of looks better already. I want to turn down how light it is. More like that maybe. That's matching our scene a little better. Now if it wasn't only affecting, if I turn this off, you'd see it's desaturating my whole scene. But when it's on, it's only affecting the grass. The other way to do it is hold down Alt and click right there, just like that. Okay, so let's do some more adjustment layers until this really fits into our scene well. Let's try some curves to get a little more contrast going on. Oh, we need to make sure in effect only the layer below. So now it's st it'll stack. So both of these are only affecting that layer. And that's just pushing the black pixels down to be darker, which I think is good. And then the light, we can push up to be lighter, which I think is bad. So we'll. I think somewhere around there is is fairly close to what we want. I wish we had made a mask for this these leaves 
so that we could kind of brighten them up a little bit, but we'll have to make do. You can always go back to your renderer and render a region and get a mask out for just those leaves there if you want. Now the next thing we need to do is go into this mask and start adjusting it, painting onto it. Remember if you paint white then the grass layer is going to show through. So what you want to do is you can start painting in places where that grass will overlap your 3D to make it blend together nicely. So like right here we want some grass around those edges so I'm just kind of dabbing those edges and you can get way better brushes for it than this. You want something that's got kind of an irregular shape maybe. You can even go into custom brushes and make make something really nice. But again that's one of those things that would be more appropriate for a full-blown Photoshop class which I do plan on doing eventually if you're interested. So I'm going to do a Photoshop class for our for architectural visualization which will really dive into all this stuff. Here's an actually grass shaped um, brush. It's not really going to do what I want there. I think this other one might work decently. Let's see. Yeah, that's painting, painting Let's see, what is that doing? I think it's painting half black and half white. Yeah, it's kind of a gray. So we don't really want it like that. If I could make it almost completely white. I think it's sampling from both our... Yeah, I'm not sure how that thing's working. You'd have to go into the uh, custom brush tab to really get this one working how you want. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's not bad, is it? So that kind of looks like, make sure you're not painting on the layer, make sure you're, this has got the outline around it so you know you're painting in the mask. Now see like around these trees we really need to get some some grass growing up like that. And I wanted this to look more like a cabin, more natural looking. So you can see that's blending actually pretty nice already. And this brush is working pretty well to make a nice soft edge where the grass is kind of overgrowing. Definitely want it over here. Show show through some of those wild wildflowers, and then make them overgrow some of these areas. This grass works surprisingly well with this scene. I don't want any of these trunks to be kind of sharp edges. And you can see it's even got a kind of a nice mid ground for us back there. That wants to be. Oops, I went, got a little too excited there. Okay. And there you have a pretty nice grass. One problem we have is the shadows from our trees are not necessarily shining through. So what we can do there, what would be the best way? Let's see. Hmm, that's interesting. So if I change the blending mode to overlay, it kind of gives, it still shows the shadows, but the grass doesn't look really the right color or anything like that. So this is this is kind of a good lesson in um, trial and error. Sometimes when you're post-processing, different blending modes, different masks, different things like that will all give you different looks and you, you might want to mess with some of them to see what gives you the best results. I think what I'm going to do here, instead of just overlaying, if I had a better grass texture underneath, I might be able to just overlay this one on top to add a little extra texture. But that's not necessarily going to work here. So I'm just going to leave it as in normal mode, so it's just showing through the regular JPEG. And then I'm going to kind of, let's see, what I can do that might help us here is... Let's go to the, the RGB layer again and hit Control J and copy a new layer up over here. Let's see if we can not select some of these shadow areas using this magic 
selection wand. Make sure you're on the RGB channel so that it has that shadow in it. And you can see I'm selecting way too much information right now, so we need to turn down the tolerance, maybe to like 5. Yeah, that might work. There we go. So that's kind of selecting some of those shadows. And it's not going to be perfect, but it doesn't need to be because we have that JPEG in there and it's going to it's going to look kind of natural and those shadows you won't be able to your eye will not be able to tell that they're not exactly accurate. Okay, that was a bad selection. So you can go through and select all these kind of things. And you could even go in just with a paintbrush and and paint onto a new layer, a nice mask. I'll show you what I'm going to do here. If I I can just take a black fill this in on a whole new layer right here. Okay, we can get rid of that. Now what we can do is just turn this to multiply, which is multiplying it by the layers below. It will basically create a nice little shadow for us. And you can see it looks a little too perfect actually. And so I think what we could do now is just create a little mask and go in and and again mask out some of those because that shadow on this kind of wild grass it's not going to be so crisp like it was on that that grass that didn't have any texture at all so we can now go into here and start painting out some of some of that shadow so it looks a little more broken up you can turn down your brush so that it's it's only a certain amount of opacity so it's only erasing not all of it at once but just kind of chunks of it and to erase it 100% you got to go over it a couple times so anyway that's that's one easy way to kind of to break that up so i think that shadow actually looks fine now just like that and that's actually looking pretty convincing for this for this scene so let's pause there and we'll go into some more compositing in the next video